Although Autumn took a while to get started, now that it's definitely here, let's take a look at some easy to set up, hands-on Montessori activities that we can do with our toddlers. If you've got a younger toddler, I do have another video from last year when my daughter was closer to one that features a different collection of activities, so I do encourage you to check those out as well. Although a lot of the activities that are in this video can also be modified for the younger ones. For our first activity, we're going to need a way to color match. These small clothespins that are colored are a great way to also practice that pincer grasp, but you can make this easier with larger clothespins or just color swatches. And then let's head outside to see all of the different beautiful colors that the fall time has to offer us. If possible, encourage your child to go ahead and use those clothespins to clip them onto that color. It takes a lot of creativity and recall on the part of the child to find where they've seen these colors before. Go ahead and bring some of those leaves inside for the next few activities that we've got. First, a classic, we're going to do some leaf rubbing. This is a phenomenal way for the child to get to see all those intricate details of a leaf, get to understand the different parts of a leaf, but also work on maneuvering their hands just right, as well as using their other hand as a helper hand to really hold that paper in place. Don't get rid of the leaves just yet, we can go ahead and laminate them and do a leaf to tree matching activity. You'll want to collect a variety of leaves around your area and make sure they're as close to representative of what a true leaf picture would look like as possible. Then I simply looked for images of those trees online, put them on a white background. Each image has that picture of a tree as well as a representation of that leaf to make it a lot easier for us to do that matching. And the child checks through with the leaves that they have until they find the corresponding match. This acorn color sorting transfer activity is very versatile. You can simply leave it as a little transfer activity. You can utilize a scoop to make it harder, or you can give your child a larger spoon to make it a bit easier. And while I had these tricolored acorns to color sort, you can certainly utilize whatever you've got that reminds your child of the fall time. Pumpkins, leaves, you can even make this more difficult by giving them tongs or chopsticks to transfer with. Another activity that you can keep as a color sorting activity, or simply utilize it for fine motor skill development, or lining up these birds in a V for we had taken notice of all the birds flying around us now that it's getting colder and so we had a discussion about how the birds line up in a V formation in order not to get lost when they're flying south. It took a lot of work and concentration to line up the birds just right and have them facing the correct direction, but these are some of the prerequisites before we can start doing some tracing and pre-writing work. If your child has mastered color matching, perhaps they're ready to do a little color pattern making. You can see Stella made this more complicated by taking out her tongues to set up the patterns with. You can certainly make the cards actually larger so your child is able to place each item onto its spot in order to fully understand the concept of pattern making. Example of what I'm doing here, I'm simply lining up each item onto its slot and then I can see how to complete the pattern. For a child who understands that concept, you can go ahead and simply give them one of each item they will need, then they can complete the pattern with just that one item. And for that control of error, go ahead and make sure you've got only one of each type of item in there. So if your child reaches the end and they've completed the pattern incorrectly, they can clearly see that something's amiss and your child may surprise you in their ability to complete the pattern. You can see I intended for Stella to actually match each item to the picture, but she was able to simply complete the pattern. A little fall item to a silhouette matching activity. For this one, make sure that you've got items that are still going to be distinct enough that the child can recognize a difference. As always, we'll lay out the cards and we'll start matching left to right until we find the corresponding match. Make sure that the silhouettes of similar looking items are still distinct enough, so the acorn, the pumpkin, and the apple can look very similar, and that became a big confusing for Stella at first, but because each silhouette was distinct enough, she was able to self-correct. The silhouette of the pumpkin is much more squished, the acorn has that distinct pattern on the very top, and the apple has a much more distinct large and long shape. It takes a lot of self-control on the part of us as the adult, but if you see your child make that mistake, just sit on your hands and give them time to see that there may be something amiss and the chance to self-correct. A more challenging take on a posting activity is using these flower arrangement blocks and some little toothpicks. These are fall-inspired toothpicks and simply inviting the child to get all the toothpicks into the block. I recommend leaving that flower arranging foam block alone and not cutting it up the way that I did because that actually made it a lot less stable. I was hoping to give it some structure by putting it into a container, but that made the whole process much more difficult simply leave it as is and it will be a lot easier for your child to navigate it that way. This is again not only a great practice of that pincer grass, but also using their other hand as the helper hand. We can also do a Montessori aligned sensory bin. The main difference being is that we give the child a purpose and they can surely simply choose to explore the sensation that the sensory bin provides, but they do have the option to, for example, sort out all of these fall items. 
Stella, for example, chose to sort out most of the items that she found in the bin, but throughout the process, she became way more entranced by the sound that the beans made when her hands were digging through them, so she started experimenting with all the different sounds that she can make. And that too is a wonderful chance for discovery. An activity will not always go the way that we plan for it to go, but as long as the child is discovering, they're having fun, they're enjoying themselves, and they're being safe, it's a success in my books. For the toddlers who've become interested in counting, we can do a fall cards and counters activity. This is the setup that we are aiming to achieve eventually, but for a younger toddler who is closer to two, like Stella is, we can provide them with some guidance. I had her line up the numbers in order because she does know the order of the numbers, but I also provided little slots for all of her counters to go on. And that was her control of Aaron because she needed to make sure that each slot was covered by a leaf. And because we lined them up in that odd even odd even pattern, we also had the chance to discuss about some of the leaves having a pair and some of them not having a pair, which is the precursor to understanding odd and even numbers. We can also use those leaves to practice sweeping, which takes a lot more dexterity and gross motor skills than we might realize. It's important to give your child a place to aim for, so I put down a piece of construction paper, you can also make an outline with some painter's tape, and model for your child how it is that we can control the broom and actually maneuver it in a way to get each leaf over into that spot. Yes, this is a practical life skill that's important for them to be able to assist in helping clean up their own messes, but it's also a lot of hand-eye coordination. We can also make our own leaves. Let's start this crafty segment with the least messy option, which is simply using a little paper punch. Make sure the style that you get is actually large enough and easy enough for a child to maneuver. This again practices some of that hand-eye coordination in getting that paper into the slots for the paper punches, as well as a lot of strength to actually press down on the lever. And then we can utilize the little cutouts that got collected on the bottom for other creative opportunities. If you manage to get some leaf stickers, we can practice putting them on a tree. I simply printed out a picture of a tree here. You can also draw one. For a younger child, we're mainly focusing on removing the backing of the sticker and getting that sticker onto the paper. For an older child, however, we can show them images of how leaves are attached to branches with stems and encourage them to find the branches and the stems on their leaves and their trees and see how they can get them to connect just right on their own versions. We were also lucky to get two sets of leaves, so now we've got a summer tree and a fall tree where we can discuss the different colors and why they're changing as well. And speaking of leaves, now we can also make our own leaves. Now we have entered a bit more messy territory. We can either provide our child with paint and paint brushes, or we can switch it up and give them these larger Q-tips. Filling the leaf in with these little dot motions is going to take a lot more precision, a lot more patience, and a bit more work and practice with that pincer grasp. Really working the same muscles that they will need to later hold a pin for pin punching and eventually for pencil holding. Because our leaf was so big, we worked on it together and we had some inspirational pictures in the background so we could see all of the different colors that we could use. We can also make a pumpkin. We're going to work slightly different muscles here by ripping up tissue paper. We again took a look at our book and noticed what different colors a pumpkin can be. We found some oranges and some yellows, so those are the colors that I provided her. We started out with ripping up enough tissue paper to fill the bowl that I had, but as time went on and she noticed she needed more, she went ahead and continued ripping more of that paper. While I typically like to provide her with liquid glue and a paintbrush to again work on that pencil grip, in this case it was definitely going to work a lot better to utilize a glue stick. Model for your child how to fill in part of the pumpkin with the glue, remember which part of the pumpkin they filled with glue, and then attach the tissue paper over to that spot. You can help your child by making the pieces larger so they don't have to glue quite as many of them onto the pumpkin, or just like we did with the leaf, you can help them by doing it together. If you've got a much younger toddler and they're not yet ready to utilize glue, you can also do this by putting some double-sided sticky tape onto the pumpkin. Our next craft is going to take us outside. We made this kite as part of the Hispanic Heritage Month kit that our library had provided us and it was a wonderful chance to explore not only other ways to utilize glue and different textures, but also see how the wind works now that it's gotten a lot windier outside. With just a paper plate, some streamers, and a string, we were able to bring that large kite that is typically up high in the sky down to our child's level. This really allowed her to see that the wind has direction, it has speed, it has power, and sometimes it comes and sometimes it goes. Our next set of activities is focused around a classic fall item, which is apples. We've looked at leaves and we've looked at pumpkins and we've looked at trees. Now let's look at the different parts of an apple. And here we're actually providing the child with the proper botanical terms for all of these things. So here we're doing a quick three period lesson with all of the different parts of the apple. So first I named them, then I asked her to hand me each different item and eventually she was able to name them back to me as well. And don't mind her stained fingers, she got a hold of all of the markers and helped me color these apples. 
Then we went ahead and actually cut up an apple to look inside and see all of the different parts. If you think about it, our children often aren't seeing the inside of an apple. We're either giving them slices or they're eating around the core, but they don't actually get to see what's going on inside. We took the time to explore everything that we saw in the apple and then match the different parts, especially the seeds to the cars that we had in front of us. And this might spark your child's interest in more apples. If you have the opportunity, I highly encourage you to take your child apple picking. We were really fortunate to find an orchard that had a wide variety of apples available for us to look through and to pick. Very unexpectedly, their trees were also all very short, so it was very easy for Stella to pick these apples by herself. And now everything that we had looked at had come together. How the leaves are attached to the branches, how the apple and all the different parts of the apple are attached to the tree, the movement of the wind, the different colors in the fall time. This was a lot of gross motor work, a lot of fine motor skills, a lot of problem solving, and a very enjoyable family time together. Also ended up with a lot of different apples. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't tell which apples we were actually picking at the orchard, and I had already pre-planned to do a little apple tasting activity, so I bought one of each variety of apple that I could find at my local store. And this was very easy to set up. We simply wash the apples. Of course, we can allow our child the opportunity to do this as an activity as well, do some apple scrubbing. This is especially great if these are the apples that you picked because you can point out specific spots that are dirty that your child can focus on and get them off and see them floating in the water instead. And then we can go ahead and prepare a slice of each type of apple. Now, I simply use the stickers that came with each apple type. You can certainly make more beautiful laminated cards that will have the name of each apple that you've selected for your child as well. Before we got to eating, we had the chance to observe all of the different colors, the different markings, and we talked about predictions. Would some of these be sweet? Would some of them be sour? And I set up two bowls for her, a bowl for the apples that she liked and a bowl for the apples that she wasn't a fan of. For an older child, we could even ask them to line up the apples from the most sour to the most sweet. If your child is typically hesitant to try new foods, making it into a hands-on activity like this that gives them full control and is more focused on simply what they prefer or don't prefer may make this a lot more of an exciting experience versus one that is focused on simply trying to take a bite. And of course, we can't leave the rest of those apples unattended. We can go ahead and make an apple crumble with them. Not only is it great for the child to see that we can create apples in different ways and see what happens when we actually bake the apples, any kind of baking is a chance for the child to follow instructions, especially if we have a visual recipe, and to practice, again, more counting, more wrist movement, and more hand-eye coordination. And of course, we're also getting all of their senses involved. I hope these activities have inspired you to try something new with your little one. And until next time, I hope you stay safe.